Rallying is a relatively new sport. It's a race against time, a fight against the elements and man-made obstructions. A test of skill and courage, engineering acumen and physical endurance. It's a modern sport and like others more matured, commands growing commercial attention and a host of frenzied followers. With a kitty of over 6,000 pounds, the Henley Forklift Galway was typical of modern Irish internationals. It had a fine entry list with a healthy sprinkling of challengers from abroad and it was an event that created interest in almost every corner of Europe because of its elevated status. It was planned by the Galway Motor Club, a heartbreak for drivers with no room for the timid or the ill-prepared. I'm John Taylor from England, and I'm a Ford Works driver who previously won the European Rallycross Championship and has now turned to rallying, and I've come to Galway for the third time, and I hope it's third time lucky and I'm going to win the Henley uh, Forklift Rally. 70% of the rallies I'm doing are uh, with base notes, but the 30% is still like, like this rally. Well, obviously Gilbert in another Ford Escort, Billy Coleman, uh, Derek Boyd, who went very well in Ulster, uh, Brian Nelson, of course. I think those are the main dangers. Well, I've been here so often now, I'm going to take my time tonight. That's basically what we're about, and uh, we'll let the thing sort itself out and see what we can do tomorrow on Sunday. I'd love to see Sunday. I really would. Well, I'm, I'm just looking at the sky overhead at the moment, and uh, they're talking about snow. Uh, I think if, if it doesn't snow, we have a very good chance. The car is very good in, in the drive. Everybody seems to think in their own mind that I go quicker when the conditions is bad, so I'd like to have them thinking that way, and I'm hoping that I don't mind whether it rains, hails, or snows, whatever it does, I'll still be trying as hard as ever. Yes, I've got a fair idea of the type of terrain, but I gather tonight, the, the stages tonight are quite bumpy. And um, so you've got to try and look after the car a bit and keep a bit of petrol in the tank. After months of planning, the rally had finally taken shape. 103 crews in pampered craft camped at a ramp in Air Square for a mayoral send-off. First in line was Belgian champion Gilbert Stapelier, winner of 82 internationals in a career spanning 24 years. His car was a highly successful escort. Number two and first of the Irish was Brian Nelson in the Porsche Carrera. Unlike Stapelier, Nelson was an enthusiastic amateur. Then came the British challenge of John Taylor, a former steeplechase jockey. John was still trying to capture his first international win after five years trying. Ronnie McCartney in another escort was fourth to take the flag, ahead of Cork's own Billy Coleman in the Lancia Stratus. And so the caravan moved off to the first of 34 stages near Fargo. Night's blackness was falling fast. escort was the initial leader from Coleman and McCartney, with the Cork escorteers Michael O'Connell and Gerald Buckley only seconds back. And then the field ran into a virtual blizzard which made conditions treacherous for some at least. Well it's very slippery and um, Jill's used to the snow so we hope that in a way it'd be an advantage to us. Well I've rallied quite a bit in Finland and uh, you know I've got used to the snow I suppose from there. The only thing is that, that you're allowed studs in Finland. Well, I've never driven in anything like this, certainly since the navigation days a long time ago. But it's, 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 it's awful. Oh, uh, I thought nice weather, but uh, it's, uh, it's uh, snowstorms and so, uh, I don't like it. Later we heard that Bernard unit in the work Sunbeam was out, Coleman had slowed and Ronnie McCartney was in serious difficulties. He appears to have some problems with his dry sump. He's looking into the back of the boot of the car. I'm not sure what's wrong. Uh, I believe uh, Bernard Unit went off in the uh, second or third stage. Uh, Billy had some boiling troubles earlier in the night. I haven't seen him. I think he's in front of us at the moment. It feels like the Alps, you know. It's not like Galway at all, really. 
it's just diabolical and we're you know we're content to be here and keep the motor car all in one piece and uh, we look forward to a better day tomorrow really unofficially we've been told we're in the lead but i, I don't know um, we're just pressing on you know all you can do is sort of try and get through tonight as best you can without making any mistakes and that's what we're trying to do only 70 crews survived that friday night's arctic weather few will forget the horror and the mayhem Yet early on Saturday morning, with most roads icy, the crowds were out in their thousands, clustered on hillsides or gathered at cold and windy crossroads, waiting to get a glimpse of the hardy drivers. John Taylor was first through. But he collected a puncture. On his way over the infamous corkscrew in Clare, there was no time to change the wheel. For once his lead was precarious and a hungry posse was following. Brian Nelson, Noel Smith were two of the sideline Porsches. Coleman, even without a puncture, found the Lancia handful. Jar Buckley was making ground from an overnight eight. And he had Michael O'Connell on his heels. Some low seeds like John Coyne in the Avenger and Ernest Kidney in the Permabose car were already on the leaderboard. Buckley caught and passed his cousin Billy Coleman on the corkscrew stage. Soon after this, Kidney's escort broke a drive shaft to end his drive. Brendan Fagan from Dublin was now in the top ten, and incredibly at this point, John Lyons from Castle Derrick and his standard escort was challenging Taylor's lead. Gilbert Stapelier was disappointingly slow. He just could not cope with the unusual Irish conditions. Yet the action continued unabated. No driver had tires suitable for the snow, but there was never a thought of abandoning the rally, while around the country most sporting and social fixtures were taking a hammering. Some drivers even enjoyed the difference. Conditions are very difficult just at the moment, particularly after the corkscrew hill, but uh, this is what rallying is all about, this is what makes it enjoyable, the unknown. Standard cars were for once at an advantage. Even automatic transmission helped one competitor. Very, very enjoyable, very enjoyable indeed. The old CVT is a terrific transmission on the snow. We, uh, the old lack of power isn't a hindrance at all. In fact, the more powerful cars, I think, are a bit slower than us in some of the stages. Saturday afternoon at Yates's Thur Valley Lee, one had to recall the poet's lines. Through winter time we call on spring, and through the spring on summer call. And when abounding hedges ring, declare that winter's best of all. as they almost ended another day, Taylor had consolidated his lead. The puncture was only a bitter memory from Clare.
John Lyons was credited with second behind John Taylor. Michael O'Connell, John Kine and Brendan Fagan made up the top five. Robin Lyons was out and Billy Coleman, still battling with the Stratus, was for the moment at least eliminated. Sunday morning before the final onslaught, it was a time to count the cost. Only 45 cars were left running, some sorely bent. Visitors were already willing to hand out compliments to the organizers, and Galway's hoteliers were able to count the race week type wealth. At Galway Race Week, we normally are full. Anyway, there's fantastic demand for bedrooms. The Galway Rally comes at a time when there isn't any great demand. It fills us up at a vital time in February. It starts the season for us. I suppose between uh, rally supporters and followers, between 20 and 30,000 people approximately would have been in Galway this weekend. In terms of money, we feel around about £250,000. If the rally went from Galway, we would have a very quiet period right through the month of February, right through up to Easter. The main changes I would like to see is more town involvement. There's plenty of business for the whole town. It seems to be centred in one location at the moment, that is Air Square. Uh, there doesn't seem to be a whole lot of business circulating through the town. Uh, we feel that everybody in the town should be made aware of the advantages that can be gained from it, and they should all get involved in that situation. Well, actually, I'm a FIA observer, and I came to see, since this is an international rally, to see that uh, all the rules and everything is kept all right. Oh, not because I'm in Galway. The only thing you have wrong is the weather and the telephone systems. But as far as a rally, it is very good indeed. The stages are excellent, and I think the organisation is first class. Probably the character of the rally in England and Ireland also is a bit different than the rallies in Europe. We have uh, rough roads, very rough roads, and uh, whereas here there's more tarmac. So the driver has to go much more faster here. So the skill of the driver is uh, very much tested. And we've got to get all the good clubs in Ireland and the good clubs in England who are running what you and I call internationals to come together as a complete family, put some money in the kitty, and really speaking, organise it themselves with the aid of their national clubs more than bringing in commercial sponsors. Because then I think you'll collect money, you'll collect with people, and I'm sure the tourist board will help us. But I think you're extremely lucky because, as you know, you can close roads where in Great Britain we can't do it, and that must attract people. I think what we've got to do is encourage them to come over more than they do. And so to the final ten stages. Despite the sunshine, Jack Frost held tight control in shaded areas. This was no time to drop the pace. There was the Henley loot at the end of the day. Brendan Fagan retired, so did John Kine, Robin Lyons and Derek McMahon, and Billy Coleman was reinstated on appeal. After three more stages, John Taylor was five minutes to the good. He was now odds on for that £1,000 first prize. Well, a bit apprehensive. We don't know what these three stages are like. Um, they say there's a lot of snow about. The cars, as we brought it over here, and it's very good. Turks Buckley in the escort was getting the better of the Cork husband and wife team of Michael and Anne O'Connor, while Billy Coleman was fifth and trying to offset a time penalty from Saturday. Former test trial champion John Lyons was sixth, the standard class leader. A broken throttle cable robbed him of a higher placing. Road conditions around Kilcreast and Loch Ray were hazardous, affording competitors little relaxation. There were some who did come a cropper on the ice and depended on rally officials for a dig out. The thousands of spectators, while paying little regard for competitors on the speed tests, caused a massive traffic jam at Seven Springs. It resulted in stages being cancelled, the rally being rerouted, and a headache for our camera team. Perhaps it was a true reflection of the current popularity of special stage rallies.
So after three hectic days and 300 miles of stages, the 40 delighted survivors returned to Galway City, few of them without scratches. We want 15 minutes off the time is there. On to that. Off it. We're not last, I think, so far. We weren't anyway, so far. So I think there are one or two behind us. Indeed there were. Taylor, Buckley, O'Connell were the order of the finish. A third time looking for the driver from Kent. The third, the first year, and then last year, unfortunately, we hit one of your famous Galway walls in uh, difficult circumstances. But it's been a very good tough run this year. And I've won my first international event, A, in Galway, because I, you know, I like coming here. It's fond memories for me. And uh, B, in Ireland, really, because I've been over here a lot with four legs, you no know, race horsing. And um, I sort of feel I have quite a close affinity with the Irish. When the stages were dry, we were doing quite well. We were second overall. Then the snow came and we didn't have snow tyres. So we dropped right down to about 10th, 12th place. Was there any chance at any time you could have cut uh, John Taylor? Well, I would like to think there is, but uh, John is a very fast man. So next sometime we'll meet him again, we'll have a go. Well, I used to uh, be a jockey. And in fact, uh, Master Owen, who's a very famous stallion, in fact, I used to ride him and rode him here in Galway. Um, and I believe, if my memory serves me right, that I actually stayed in this same hotel. He was going very, very well. He has a good deal more power. He's an experimental engine in his car at the moment, and it's giving out a lot more power than our engine, which is, you know, the sort of um, work spec to date. But this one is, is newer, newer again. And um, it, it must be, you know, obviously, I'm not taking John's driving ability. He drives very, very well, but he must have a lot of power because, you know, where he really wants to go, he just can't stay with him. I think one of the, quite one of the most demanding rallies I've ever done, especially today. The, the, the roads, I think, were quite some of the most dangerous conditions I've ever driven in, where you had sheet ice and then a bit of grip, and the whole time you were going from grip to nothing, grip to nothing and this black ice that you couldn't see, especially the second time through. Oh dear, oh dear, I think we're all here but for the grace of God.